um, you know, Gunskill can play a huge role. And in terms of a map like Border, where you're going to want to look to take key rooms and establish good footholds, it's often the best way to do that is to brute force your way into the site and get the kills and, you know, frag out in those areas. And that that can then allow you to execute on. So, yeah, like you say, I'm um, going to be moving into Consulate now, getting straight into these map bands. And let's see how the uh, how the map bands go. We're going to see an Ash ban. So I think that's... Pretty that's fair, honestly. That's a target. It's got to be a bit of a target there from Team Vitality. They've seen what Uno's been able to achieve on the Ash, um, not just through the course of these qualifiers, but in the last game particularly. And a Blackbeard ban going to come out as a counter from the stream. Obviously, a lot of window potential on Consulate and Blackbeard being one of the better operators to choose in that scenario. Again, Glass is actually going to make it through the operator bans here. And we'll see exactly how that's going to work out because neither team on Clubhouse, when uh, the Shuman Empire were playing, there was no glass ban. They didn't actually bring it through. So we'll see how that goes down as we see the Valkyrie getting banned out by the stream as well. Pretty also potent operator. I feel like the stream are playing this pre default in terms of bans compared to their earlier bans coming out against Empire. Maybe they feel like against Vitality, they don't have to do anything too special. Vitality will ban out the mirror, which isn't that powerful on this map compared to other maps but she can be a bit of a pain on that downstairs attack. With with Lestream removing Valkyrie from the equation, it made Team Vitality's job a little bit easier there in choosing the last ban for them to go into their defensive phase with. Of course, they're going to be on defense first. Um, so they're going to be, you know, making sure that they've got their, the, the best chance they have of, uh, of, you know, dealing with good operators. So Maestro and Echo both going to be available and we're actually going to see a clash pick coming straight off the rip for an archive and tell us. So not only a split bomb site, but we're, uh, ah, there we go. We are going to see that six pick onto the Echo. Echo too important to not bring if he is available. Yeah, definitely. We are seeing the Zofia coming out from the Uno Meister himself as we move into round number one. It's coming in Archives Tell us, as you said. Kind of a weird one. Attackers need to locate I think it's just maybe trying to catch the stream off guard at this point. You know, a split bomb site isn't one that you're going to want to go to as, uh, as a default. It is a viable bomb site. Often we do see it played in conjunction with a castle just to try and zone out some areas and slow that attack and push. But I think it's certainly going to catch the stream off guard here and it's all going to be about how they're able to adapt and, you know, deal with this on the fly. They have brought double hard breach, so it looks as though they maybe were even expecting Vitality to take him down to Garage first. We should see something like that coming through. As this is going to be round number one, it's going to be Team Vitality who take on the stream eSport. Remember, remaining. this is the very final qualifier. 15 teams have qualified for the Invitational so far. It's going to be the stream versus Team Vitality. Only one of these can make it. There is only one spot left remaining. It's all or nothing here. There is nothing more to hide. The strats have to start coming out. I think Vitality have more to play for here in terms of strategy though. Yeah, it's like the we had, when we had just had the interview with Joyce, didn't we? He, uh, he alluded to the fact that the stream are very good at pushing, they're very good at the gun skill, and they're very good at taking the side control that they would need to take. And often their execution comes down to you know less of strategy and more of just being able to win gunfights and get trades. And there's nothing really wrong with that. It is a relatively new roster um, that you know they're not been really playing together all too much time. So they, they've got to kind of rely on that a little bit until they're able to develop um, you know firm plans of their own. But look at all the information that Bibu is able to gather down here with that pulse scanner. Yeah, definitely, and Bibu is going to be playing that fairly aggressively. Hicks is going to get the first kill, however, Brid already off the board, and they already have control of the site, but the Nitro goes out from Bibu, and he does find the kill onto the planter. Hicks goes down, and now it's a 4v4, but the control of the site is heavily into the favor of the stream, and they do have the book on the board. He's going to pick up the Diffuser, he's going to try and get into the site info for the plant. Alphama from downstairs just take down Bibu, but instantly traded up by Spark, but that's your pulse gun down. They don't have the info that the plant is going down, but Rise doesn't go and get it. Echo from below does take him down, and this is now a 3v2. Nothing too good for the stream. Got a little bit baited into pushing the site a little bit too early before they prepared to do so. And now the vitality is starting to come through. Let's see how it does go now. So halfway into the round, and what a shot from Uno is going to take down Sneaky. Now it's a 2v2. The extra one still should be above, however, as Uno going to desperately try and stick this plant. Looks like he's going to be able to do so. And there we go. Ace gets killed into Spark. It's all down to RXWD to try and get this kill. It's going to be 2v1. He's the Claymore. He pushes all the way up, but no aces will take him down with the AR-33. The stream will take round number one in a very aggressive fashion. They had three attempts there at trying to get that diffuser down, and it did eventually stick. 
I'm not sure why they rushed into the site so aggressively early on when there was so much deniability left on the side of the defenders. They had Echo, Maestro and the Pulse from below. I'm not sure if maybe they were relying on the Thatcher's EMP to do a little bit too much work there in disabling all three of those. Um, but ultimately it did work for them because they were able to trade off those kills. The Diffuser was then in a position that they'd kind of got a bit of control of but they were still sort of getting poked at from various angles from the defenders. Good round from the stream. I think on another t on another try, that maybe goes the way of Team Vitality. Yeah, potentially. I think that Intel could have been a little bit better because they had an Echo and there was no IQ coming out from the stream. So I'm not really sure what happened to those Echo drones throughout the round, but I'm okay, going to assume they did get shot out. Otherwise, I don't know how that really plant just goes down like that. So early on. Yeah, the Echoes must have been taken out. Um, I'm not sure if Thatcher maybe disabled them and it was just a case that there was too much pressure being applied to the Echo from to be able to jump into the Yokai well, drone. Well, when the EMP goes down, the Echo drone drops from the floor and starts, you know, you can't control it anymore. So, yeah, you are right. If the Thatcher did go down there, it could be easy able to pick up those Yokai drones. But we're going to move through the to round number two. Vitality clearly not favoring that defense. I'm going to switch it up and go downstairs instead. Which is kind of interesting because it's the mirror band. I think it's something that the I think it's something that the stream were maybe expecting them to go first round. And Vitality have just tried a little bit of a debate on the split bomb site, which really although it's viable, it really isn't that popular in terms of the other bomb sites that are available on consulate. But like you say, with a mirror band, it can make things a little bit easier. Uh, sorry, or a little bit more difficult to defend downstairs in garage, but we're gonna see a fairly uh, heavy east control uh, now being taken by the streamers. They're going to repel in upstairs. I don't know if I like this because I don't think they really need to take all so much control upstairs. A few pre-placed drones in the prep phase would have told them all they need to know and they might just waste quite a bit of time here trying to drone out and clear top floor. Yeah, maybe a little bit of time being wasted here, but I'm not really sure how much I feel good about this clash being brought because there's just so much from the stream to counter this. They got the Zofia and they have the book, they have nades coming out. I mean, they have the, the Thatcher to a certain extent can disable the CCE uh, shield from Clash, so. I think it's Clash with no Jaeger. That's maybe something that is going to come unstuck because, like you say, there's a lot of throwables on the side of the stream that they're going to be able to deal with the Clash with. Obviously, Zephyr is a good operator to deal with Clash as well. And not having a Jaeger ADS there to kind of support that, the Clash in that role on Yellow, which she's playing as aggressively as she can, but. If she pushes the door, she's going to end up getting shot from the stairs. If she pushes the stairs, she's going to get shot from the door. She's already pinned in by a Claymore there, so Team Stream are doing a really good job there of just removing the Clash from really being an issue and not allowing her any space to play. Yeah, and talking about Stream, they already have huge amounts of control coming out. The Clash isn't really doing much to alleviate that, and they already have control of the upstairs area. Clash is just trying to play very aggressive around on the yellow stairs, but now the garage is getting opened up, and all of a sudden, this is not looking too good for RxWD to try and push around here. This is not looking too good at all. Round number two looking pretty good for the stream so far. They're making good use of their time, but getting into the last minute, we really have to start thinking about where the push is going to come from. They do have garage control, and they have it opened up, and they have everything they need to go for the plant. But Team Vitality also have everything they need to deny the plant. There's still so much utility available for them, but one Nitro will go out, and it will not connect. Yeah, some smokes would start looking pretty good on the side of the stream as Thermite is just going to open the other side of the garage in an attempt to gain a little bit more line of sight. And, you know, the, the planet has got to start coming down pretty soon. We're in the final 45 or so seconds now. This is where the fact that there's no mirror really comes in to help the stream. Clash is going to be able to gather a lot of information and her defenders are going to be able to peek off that information. But ultimately, it's not going to be as handy as having another gun on the site at this point as Alpha is there going to push in and just try and plant in a default spot in front of White Van as Clash there just gets disoriented by the uh, Zephyr, sorry, as smoke grenades start to come in. Sneaky is going to pick up a kill onto Vitality. Uno is going to trade it straight back. Another quick kill going to come out from the stream as the Diffuser is going down. Clash is going to be forced to push up but loses a life to Hicks. Four versus two, the Diffuser has gone down. The stream now, all they've got to do is hold this post plant situation. They've got upstairs control in piano and Brid is all but aware of that. He's making sure he doesn't take his eye off the open holes in the floor. But ultimately, it's a very tall order now for Vitality to be able to try and take, retake this site and get this post plant off. Rise is going to pick up the first one there onto Sneaky. Four versus one. Hicks going to close it out. Another round on the board for the stream. Second successful attack in a row. Vitality just aren't playing well together. I really, as I said, I don't know what that clash was adding in there at all. He played around the yellow stairs for pretty much the entire round and didn't really do anything. And then when he tried to get aggressive, he got shut down immediately who, you know, Hicks played that really well because he was baiting out Clash to try and peek because he knew that the, 
the fuse was going down. So all he has to know is that the fuse is going down. He knows that the Clash has to get aggressive now. He just has to wait until the peak comes out. Then he can peek around himself, immediately shut him down. Really well played from the stream. They're playing quite well off their frag ability and they're taking a lot of control very early on. Vitality aren't doing that well to bring anything that's not default here. And when, when they are, they're just not using it very well. Like you say, the the clash is just not really working for him. They're, they're choosing to go for it again on lobby. Defenders again, you know, Consulate isn't a map attackers. that you see and you think of clash initially because there's long lines of sight, there's multiple crossfires that can be developed by the attackers. And I just think that Clash is going to be left a little bit wanting here. I'd have much rather seen someone try and contest Piano upstairs a little bit more last round and try and, you know, hold off the control that Buck was able to get so early on and opening up the floor because it really was crucial to how the stream were, ascent, were, were able to execute in those final seconds and get the bomb down and get the Bandit batteries off. But, you know, it, it's, all, it's all, you know, subjective because at this point, the stream are coming in off a pretty hot, you know, couple of games with Empire. Very, very close game on Coastline. They're going to be fired up to take this first map off Vitality. And they're not really going to want to leave anything to chance. So, like you say, it's time to perform now. And I think Vitality maybe just take them a few rounds to, you know, find the stride and uh, and start getting some more kills and pick up a round on the board. I really love the Capital coming out here from Aces. I think that's definitely going to change up the round play coming out from the stream. They're playing a lot better together now when they were playing as Empire. We talk a lot about, you know, you've just played a best of three. Playing another best of three back to back, that's not ideal. But when Nip came out of that, they actually came out of it pretty strong, honestly. It's the best warm up that you can hope for because you're playing at a very competitive level. You know, you're playing the competition, you're playing to win. I think there's, there really can't be any better warm up. It, it mustn't have been too. Well, it's not too fatiguing because the game, the first game wasn't so long in Clubhouse. Uh, the second map on, on Coastline for the stream was a bit longer, so it, it makes it a bit better as a, as a bit of a warm up. I think how's the diffuser gone down? There's still nine players left on the site, and Aces is down. All five defenders alive, and the diffuser's gone down. Clash has done absolutely nothing to try and hold this off, but the diffuse will be being stuck by Brid, covered by the Clash. Two quick kills come out for Vitality. The guy that's taking the diffuse is going to have all the time in the world as all the attackers are dead. Clash played perfectly, covered the diffuse, kills were able to come out, and now they're going to get it off. And now the Aegis is going down. Thank God. Yeah, I don't really know what happened. Why was that allowed to happen? There was BB playing downstairs with the pulse. He had info onto the site, and the smokes go out. The Clash should know that the plant is going down at that point. Maybe some people might be thinking, oh, it's a retake strategy. But one, that's a really bad thing to try and do in Siege because you're not going to win a retake really normally if the attackers are playing right. What I can't understand there from the stream is he got the plant down so early on, and then they played the post plant really badly. They were peaking everything. They were playing really aggressively. What they should have done is they played much further off their utility. They know there's no ADS down because they just threw a nade in. And while the Clash was doing well to cover the post plant in terms of you know, actually defending him, the nade coming through, you can't actually protect him with the nade. The, the explosive damage doesn't damage the shield Defenders player, but it does damage whoever the shield player is playing next to. So, Like you say, it's the second round now that we've seen that Lustream have tried to plant relatively early. The first round of this map, it worked for them. They were able to attempt planting the diffuser three times. They you know, managed to trade some kills off the back of that. And ultimately, they managed to pin Echo downstairs on the split bomb site, which we'll back at again. But that last round, I just didn't really feel like there was any need to plant that quickly. It was, I don't even think we'd had a minute or, or a minute and 30 off the time. It was just so, so quick. They've got a lot more time and I hope they're just not rushing these things and trying to get through this game with Vitality because Vitality aren't the kind of team you want to do that against. You're really going to want to take this seriously. And I think the way that they've won the first two attacking rounds so convincingly and then that one just seemed to have gone a little bit pear-shaped. I don't know, I think they need to take a, take a step back now and really just try and gain some control, establish some good lines of fight, some good lines of fire and some good cross uh, some good cross angles and work off that a little bit more instead of just trying to rush the plant down. We did mention this during the North American broadcast, but pear-shaped is a very <laughs> British slang term. It just means, you know, everything's just messed up. And yeah, that definitely just described what's been happening in these rounds. We'll see how Vitality defend this, but what I like about this is that it's different. You know, it's it's somewhere different where they can go here and they can play against strats and they can play strat heavy, whereas the stream might not be too used to attacking this site. And, you know, before we definitely saw that where they were just trying to plant immediately when they were still having to deal with the pulse from below. It was a pretty bad clear coming out from the stream altogether. 
and they lost. As you said, they were trying to plant the bomb three times, and two times they were losing the planter. Not just having the plant not be able to go down because of echo drones or whatever, because the planter now, they were dying while they were planting the diffuser. That is something that should not be happening. I mean, the stream are no strangers to go into a slightly off bomb site. We saw them take us to bar twice on Clubhouse. So I'm sure they're aware of, you know, this bomb site and how to attack it and all those sort of good stuff. But it, like you say, the, the fact that they're rushing it so much just seems like they maybe haven't got so much of an idea of how they want to push it. Maybe they're a little bit more prepared now. But this is a much slower push overall, and I think that it's doing them much better. Uh, there's a fear there. Just trying to find out if anyone's playing at the bottom of the stairs, throwing a lifeline down there. And I don't think it detonated straight away, so she's going to be pretty sure that uh, no one's playing at the bottom of the stairs. But so much utility left on the side of Vitality in terms of plant denial, as uh, Pulse there just going to be able to call out the position of pretty much every attacker that is left on the map at this point. And definitely, Bibu still got his Nitro downstairs as well as a Cardiac Sensor to give off all this info. And we've still got Echo Drones on the site as well. So there's still so much fun to now here for Vitality, and that is a great start as well. Sneaky does take down Alphamer, who has the Diffuser. And oh my god, Bibu with the Nitro from below. He takes down Uno as he tries to make his way into the site. Brid finds another one, and now it's a 2v5, but not looking too good for the stream here. The Diffuser is down in sight, and they have zero control. Aces moves in to try and recover the site, but no, he knows the Echo Drones are above. It doesn't have any MPs left remaining, so no real counter coming out, and they're running out of time. 35 seconds left to go on the clock. Rise is going to rotate all the way down. They have to try and find some kills, but pretty much the entire defense from Vitality right now is on the bottom floor. It's going to be a very hard push coming out indeed. Rise is going to move all the way downstairs through the down visa stairs, but Sparky picks up one, and it's all down to Rise in a 1v4. It does take off one as Sneaky goes down. But there's so much utility, there's so much info coming out from Vitality right now. It's all down to Rise to try and bring it in. The Echo Drone goes out, but Spark from below does take him out. Oh no, he rotated the way up. Okay, well, really well done from Spark then to do that. And yeah, Vitality will take round number four. Pretty good from them to even the scoreboard up here on Consul, and such a weird offside from them as well. That, uh, that defense is obviously the way that the Vitality envisioned it going the first time. And they obviously knew that they weren't too far away from that. That's why they went and tried it again. And you can see that having all of your denial downstairs, it's just so valuable because they're so well protected. Pulse is just able to gather so much information playing the cardiac sensor down in archives, looking up toward, uh, looking up toward Visa, uh, uh, Visa uh, and admin. So it makes it very, very easy for them then to just call people out and able to set up crossfires. We saw there that Vitality barely lost a man taking out the, the entire side of the stream. Uh, we're going to see the Echo Drone again, as well as the Clash this time. But uh, Ace is going to switch over onto the IQ. The Echo Drone's there, obviously just proving a little bit too much for the stream to deal with. And they're going to have to try and, you know, find a way to uh, approach these Echo Drones a little bit more head on. And, uh, you know, no better operator than the IQ for that, uh, for that purpose. Yeah, definitely. So, Mute Jammers will go down. And I like the fact that Sneaky's picking the Bulletproof camera here. Although... I'm not sure if it's entirely necessary, and you're losing a Nitro at the same time when there's no other Nitro available, because there's a Maestro on the board. I honestly, I still, again, I really don't like the Clash here. Even though they did win a round with the Clash, this Attack round where they offended the with the Clash the downstairs, she didn't add anything. Ten seconds left before it's just too situational, playing the Clash on the yellow stairs, and again, there's no ADS Five coming out three. on the side of Vitality, so there's not going to be any uh, any ability to stop any grenades or any flashes that are going to come through, or even EMPs, like you say, and just sort of remove the Clash's ability from the equation and just leave it with the shield. I, I think it's a, it, there's a lot more operators that you can take in that scenario um, that are going to make it easier for you to be able to hold this side, because Garage is all about making sure that you're not exposing yourself from the top floor, and some more roamers would certainly go a long way into trying to keep hold of Piano a little bit longer. Maybe even the pulse for the C4 toss. I really can't understand the lack of a Jaeger here, depending on you know what's been happening. But just looking at the lineup that Lashuma have been bringing, you've got nades on this lineup. We also have Zofia charges, and I really thought the Ash ban went through not just to calm down Uno just a little bit and put him on the Zofia instead, but also to just stop those Maestro cans getting destroyed as effectively and as quickly as before. But that just doesn't seem to be happening right now for Vitality. I really don't know why you're not picking the Jaeger and why you're bringing the Clash instead. Like you say, it doesn't make all too much sense. Even a Bandit at this point, because the wall got opened within the first 40 or so seconds. And that's going to allow Thermite plenty of time to get a drone in. He's even going to have enough time, well, and, and the opportunity to open the other side of the garage as well. And there is some denial that's going to be coming out, but 
I don't think that the clash is really going to add much to that clash playing back in basement corridor. And this is the position where Clash played last time. Great at gathering information. Her defending teammates are going to be able to peek off that information to a degree. But that's about all that they are going to be able to do because she's not going to be able to push up. We've already got an attacker playing on yellow stairs and the ceiling is open above. So it's making, you know, they're just removing Clash as a factor and it's making it very difficult for the Clash to operate in the site with any surety. Yeah, it definitely is. But I'm, I like that Clash is playing a little bit safer than she was last time because she was playing right on yellow last time. And that was not a great place for her to be at all. She couldn't play aggressively around it, but we got Clash Side's rotation holes here, but no, she can't quite rotate. She's going to get quite lit up, though. She's moving through all the way onto the visa stairs instead and trying to shut down that push the stream. Starting to run out of time here to try and make that push happen. They don't really have, they don't have any smoke, so they don't really have any way of getting into the site. I think they just need to go in and just start planting because there's not a lot of plant denial coming up from Vitality. There should be an IQ moving through here just making sure there's no Echo Drone around this area. Yeah, the Echo Drone and the Maestro and the smoke obviously coming through there are uh, going to be all that's needed to deny this plant. And that's maybe why you say that Alpha should have possibly tried to plant that a little bit earlier because now we're into the final 30 seconds. Smoke has got more than enough capability of zoning out a large area of that garage and making this plant very difficult to go down. Still got 10 operators left on the map at this point. Alpha's going to go deep and try and plant next to the bomb. Two quick kills coming out, four versus four. Brid making it a third. As another two quick kills come out, making it three versus two in favour of the defenders. Clash still available and just able to shut down the Hibana there and allow Vitality to pick up those last two kills with ease. You know, I actually, I go back on what I said, my analysis at the start, where he was bringing the Bulletproof Cam instead of the Nitro. I think it's actually really smart to do because if you think about it, two Maestro Cams, one Bulletproof Cam, only two Zofia charges for the impacts. So there isn't actually a lot that the stream can do to take off every single bit of info coming out. I think that helped them quite a lot, but also the Clash playing a lot more passively was a little bit better there. But the stream just seemed to have absolutely no info on what was going on in the site. And just pushing it the last second, right, that that that's the vitality strategy. It's not the stream strategy. They just needed a little bit more utility to get in and get the plan down. I, I like the capital being brought now because that's going to provide them a little bit of smoke cover and uh, the asphyxiating bolts which are going to be able to zone Defenders out any clash play that we may see. Uh, of course, last time that Lestream attacked this bomb site, they were able to get the bomb down pretty much record time, I think. Uh, but it was just all too easy for Vitality to defend that post plant, kill all the attackers and get the defuse off. So maybe a little bit more time spent now from the stream in taking a bit more site control. Uh, but the Capital versus the Clash is certainly going to be a more effective way of dealing with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that the stream haven't been bringing the Capital more here. They did bring it a little bit go, but I still can't think that it really did that much. And Vitality are looking really strong right now. They had a very poor start. But then all these signs play around their strats a little bit better. And all of a sudden, I'm becoming a little bit more warmer to this Clash play because it did a decent amount on that last defense and also did a really good job on the lobby press room. So we'll see how it goes down again. Although I still think that the streamer kind of defeating themselves at this point. They came out really hot and they picked up the first couple of rounds relatively easily. And then all of a sudden it's shifted and Vitality picked up three on the bounce. So they've got the momentum at this point. This is the last round of this phase, which can be very important. It's all about, it's all going to be about how the stream are able to take on their defensive rounds. I think they'd be very happy to come out of this three rounds apiece for the first phase. But like you say, it just seems well, like Vitality have just taken a couple of rounds to get into the swing of things and they seem to be doing very well uh, from here. The stream taking a little bit more time over this push this time, which uh, I think that's to be expected due to how it went last time. They just need to calm down a little bit and understand that the game with Empire has been and gone. They've not really got the momentum leading into this game anymore. And I think they just need to set themselves up for good takes, good pushes, try and get the bomb down and try and be able to defend that post plant because that's something that they've struggled to do so far. Ryze getting very aggressive here to try and push in onto the yellow stairs. I like this push coming out from the stream this time. But oh my god, the Clash is going to move all the way up. Ryze just has to get out of there. That's great rotate ability coming out from the Clash there. Looks like Ryze is going to have to make his way into the garage instead. But yeah, Bibu is playing around this as well. And I don't think they know that Bibu's here. He has a great opportunity to play around the Clash and do it very, very well. Because the stream are going to be very worried about this Clash just pushing up on them in yellow. But BB's going to be there as well. He's also a pulse down below with a nitro, with a cardiac sensor. He has the ability to push out that intel. I love this rotate strategy coming out from Vitality. This clash is actually really smart from them all of a sudden. 
The Clash is doing a lot of good work, and like you say, Boo is operating now in Garage. I think pretty much unknown to the stream. I'm not sure that they're fully aware of his presence. All he's got to do is just hold that angle patiently and wait for the Hibana to make her way in. But of course, the Clash is providing really good zone and really good crowd control for the attackers that ultimately are going to start running out of time very shortly as we move into the final 50 seconds. You can see angles being opened up here by Aces, just trying to find anything that he can down onto the site. Full upstairs control has been taken, but it's not really going to matter all too much. There's still a lot of deniability left on the side of Vitality. Again, we're getting ourselves into the final 30 or so seconds of the round. We've got 10 operators left remaining. Yeah, there's still so much remaining. 30 seconds left to go. This is not looking too good for the stream. They have to try and push in and get control quickly, but they haven't deployed a lot of their utility, but BB is going to go down. Oh my God, how do you lose that fight? Ace is taken down instantly. We'll see the push starting to come through. The Clash very, very low now. It's starting to get pushed out from all sides, but she's doing a great job to try and shut down this attack coming through. But the Capital just pushed all the way up. Ace gets a double kill and Alphama finishes off the Clash. The stream take round number six. Very, very well played from them coming out, but they've only managed to even the scoreboard out three piece. You've got to be pleased with that as the stream. Uh, they didn't really look like they were going to do all too much that last round, and then it kind of all came in a flurry at the end, which is something that we've seen them struggle with earlier on this evening is the time management. And I think it's got to be attested to that clash. I know we were both very skeptical of it when we first saw it come out. And then as Vitality developed and, you know, kind of got a bit more comfortable with how they were going to play the clash and how they were going to play around it, more importantly, you know, it, it, it started to work really well for them. If BB gets that kill onto the Hibana downstairs, maybe that's a little bit different because, you know, it would have removed another member from the team and they would have still had a Nitro below. So it was a very, very close round, but the stream edged it in the end. And now we're going to switch sides and it's going to be the stream's turn to see what they can do in defending Consulate. Now, Consulate does tend to go Attack into the favor of defenders. So this scoreline isn't quite what I was expecting, but again, we can't really rely on the stats too heavily. And we've seen a lot of 50-50 games so far. I think we're just getting to the point where the competition's so high uh, and the teams are operating at such a level that they're really, really planning out how they're going to do this, how they're going to execute their attacks. And it does just come down to very small gunfights, very small mistakes. Like I say, if the pulse was left alive that last round, there could have been a double nitro kill coming out there. You just do not know. And, and they, they can be the kind of things that shift the tide. So, like you say, the stream have got to be pretty pleased coming into this 3-3, uh, especially with uh, them moving now onto the defense. They're going to take us upstairs to a bomb site that we didn't actually see Vitality attempt to defend. I think they're going to get very, very aggressive with this right now. You see Uno. He's ready for that spawn peak coming out from Admin. I'm pretty sure he's just going to try and peek it out, but... It doesn't look like anyone is ready to contest him on that. Aces, Uno, and Ryze all holding down to admin, which is a pretty typical take. And when you don't have a glass as well available, you might see that come through. But there is glass on the board, but no one's been taking it. EU just don't want to play glass, it seems. It's, uh, it's something that we've seen banned out a heck of a lot in other regions, but it's, uh, it's been available for a couple of the games this evening, and that we've not seen any glass play. But, uh, you know, th there's reasons for that. I'm sure they're just opting to have, uh, you know, different operators available to them. The IQ is going to, you know, prove pretty uh, pretty crucial, especially with Echo being available there. Ryze is going to push down pretty aggressively, but it's going to be Aces that picks up the first kill onto the Zephyr. Hicks putting the pump shotgun to very good work as well. Quickly, this is looking pretty good for the stream. Two kills within the opening minute is nothing to be grumbled at. Third, Ryze is going to take out Bibu at the bottom of yellow. And all of a sudden, it looks very, very difficult for Vitality to come back from this. They've got two operators remaining. And it's going to be Spark, actually. He's stood on the ledge at the top of Yellow Stairs on the skylight. He's just going to drop down. And it's going to remove him from being able to peak that quite nice angle. At this point, the stream aren't really going to be pushing anything. They don't need to peak. There's still a lot of time left on the clock. And it's very doable for Vitality to get these couple of kills and try and break these engagements down into winnable one versus ones. But the stream are just going to hold tight. There's no need for them to push anything. And they're not going to want to throw away this round. Yeah, not just quite yet, but Vitality in a very aggressive position. Now they need to start taking gunfights, and there comes the first one. Spark will find the kill onto Uno. There's a dot going down, so a big, immense, big amount of frag potential going down from the stream, but Vitality start to need to work through them. This will be a 4v2. They can start to play a little bit closer. They've got plenty of time to work with. And they have a decent amount of utility on the board, of course, as well. Both on yellow, just trying to push it up desperately, but the stream, they know where they are, and they have plenty of planted out, but Spark makes another entry kill. There goes Aces. That's a great entry kill coming up from Vitality. That's exactly the space that they needed. And now it's a 3v2. The situation has changed. 
Now they can start to play a little bit safer and start to bait out utility. And the last smoke will come down from Hicks. Some really early smokes coming down before to try and push the, in the yellow. Oh, sorry, he still had one more. So there he goes. There goes the last smoke finally. But he's playing the top of these stairs. He's got the pump shotgun. And you can tell he's ready. He's like, come on, peek me. Peek me. Do it. Do it. But I'm going to peek you. And you're going to go down. And you're going to go down. And Hicks gets the double kill. Beautiful. Uh, 3k from Hicks to finish out the round. The stream take round number seven. You see the pump shotgun come out there and you just know that it's time. It's time for pump shotty time. And what better place than yellow stairs? Great job there from Vitality and picking up a couple of kills. But ultimately, I think that it was Lestream maybe being a little bit too reckless and using that man advantage to their favour at that point. Um, maybe peeking things that they didn't really need to peek. It's okay because it worked out for them and they had plenty of, uh, you know, plenty of wiggle room, if you will, left within that round. Um, but yeah, good round from Lestream. Very well defended. Great two opening kills, which really shifted it into their favour. Uh, oh, I was really hoping we were going to see the, uh, the Ella, but we're, uh, we're going to six pick over onto the Echo there. But uh, it's a great bait because it has forced Bibu to actually move off the IQ. Yeah, that's really good actually coming out there. So, you know, he's going to move off that IQ thinking there's no echo being brought. So there's no reason to be on this right now. He can just watch over to the Habana. They can bring double hard reach here, which is always very useful on Consular. And we'll see how that goes down. We're actually going to go to this split bomb site, which I didn't think the stream was going to go to considering how they attacked it. Didn't seem like they were very used to this, but clearly they have a strategy in mind. This is interesting as well because he's putting those castles down and he's putting the new forceps down as if there was a mirror there. But of course, no mirror available. No, no mirror to play off, but the castles still provide good utility in terms of trying to uh, you know, slow down the push. Zafir being available, of course, will be brought and uh, is very capable of dealing with those castles. But I think the, the thing that I really like about this split bomb site is it can be really difficult as the attackers to sort of round up the defenders and understand which way they want to push because the utility can, you know, is deployed over split floors anyway in the fact that there's, you know, a split bomb site. But then as soon as you start, you know, investing a little bit upstairs as well, the attackers have really got to take good control of a lot of the map to be able to do anything with it and to try and, you know, execute a push or get a plant off. So I, I, I do really like this split bomb site for that reason. Yeah, and it can be pretty good indeed. We've seen some odd sites, as you said before, from the stream. We saw a bar defense coming out from there. It didn't quite work out for them as they wished, but um, Vitality, on the on the other hand, should be very used to attacking this because they just took it twice and they know how to defend it well. But I think the stream are taking the opposite strategy to what they did because they're holding very, very heavily upstairs and they can play off that vertical play as it does come down. So they want to mention as well from the previous round is that uh, Rise played really well against the book from Vitality by using the pump shotty, and uh, that can't be undervalued because the book can really start to tell you tear you apart on that console. And we definitely saw that coming out uh, during the last time games. There's so much destructibility on console, and a lot of it is underutilized. Most of the top floor is is able to be destroyed. And you can see what I was saying earlier about Vitality now. They're being forced to take upstairs as well as focusing on the levels that the bomb site are on. And all the while, Uno is allowed as the pulse to just gather all this information and figure out where the pull, where, where the push is going to be coming from by using his cardiac sensor downstairs in archives. So it really does make it difficult for the attackers to round anybody up. Surely going to go for at least a shoot through the floor. There it is. I don't think he's quite going to manage to connect. Doesn't really want to waste his night, so at this point there's still a minute left and he knows he's got his teammates up th upstairs that are going to be fending off the push for him as well as Aces picks up a kill onto Sneaky, so Zafir no longer a factor. Yeah, he needs to save this Nitro to deny the plant rather than anything else because, of course, they don't really have too much plant now. They do have the Echo and they do have the Smoke, but definitely hard to try and get those into position, but Vitality not bringing the IQ here, it could be definitely bad for them. Moving into round number eight, however, but seconds left to go on the clock and there we go oh it's gonna be capital just repelling outside to get take down aces there goes admin control oh my god rxwd just runs in there he doesn't care he just takes him down bb finds one capital bolts are gonna start to go down bb in a very precarious position here He's on a sliver of hp flashbangs are gonna come down to try and get to sight smokes go through as well but uno below does have nitro available to him you can see the plant going down as we have to deny it easy as that there we go phone call made and Uno denies the plant. Now with 2v3, Attackers but the stream looking very, very good right now. Vitality do recover the diffuser. You know just trying to try and push all the way around, but he hits the drone and gets peeked plan. out. It's all down to Alpha Mode to try and get the vertical play on the go and try and deny the plant going down. But it is going to go down on top of the table. Alpha Mode cannot deny the plant. 
He's now in a 1v3. It's a post plant situation. He's going to rotate all the way up Spiral to see what kind of frags he can bring here. But peeking out slowly but surely, takes out the Echo Drone. Sorry, takes out the Normal Drone as he tries to push around. But he cannot deal with that Capital. He's going to push all the way up, but he's a very slow boy. He's going to try and push up and go for the free fires But no, he can't quite find him. They know where he is. He doesn't have a lot of options. And he's running out of time. He's going to push all the way up, but still going for the pre fires And desperately trying to win this gunfight. But he's being locked out of the situation. There we go. BB finally going to finish him off. Vitality, take round of eight. I like the fact that the Pulse was able to save his Nitro for the plant. But it ju the plant just came in a little bit too early for it to be that much of a factor. There was no Yokai drones left, despite the fact that they managed to debate out that IQ pick. It was, a re it was looking like a really good round for Lestream, and I loved the way that they defended it, but it just wasn't quite enough. Vitality just came in with a slew of kills and ultimately ended up taking the round, really keeping things even at four rounds apiece. We're now going to go back to Lobby and Press Room, um, and we've got the Vigil and the L this time, so surely we're going to see one of those guys six picked out of, and I'm not sure if it's going to be changed over for the Echo yet again. Yes, it is, and no IQ coming out on the side of Vitality this time, but uh, we've got a Thatcher. Thatcher, obviously, very good at dealing with those yokai drones as well i don't like the fact that vitality weren't using their six pick there just Cash because if you have it you might as well use can. it you might as well just save one of the operators you would intend to bring in your lineup but we are going to move through it's going to be round number nine getting underway and we'll see exactly how vitality want to take this during their attack they've had a pretty good attack so far and they've had uh, a pretty poor one as well but we'll see how it does work out as we go back to the lobby press room but this time for the stream's defense and I love the Capital here from Vitality. I think he can add a lot to this push. And we saw the same thing with Lestream, because when they attacked here, they were Capital vaulting in and punting immediately. Yeah, and it was down to the uh, the clash that was able, you know, that really aided the uh, the, the defuse on that plant as well. Uh, what, what's your thought about no Maestro being chosen here? I think, you know, Maestro and Lobby seems to be quite a, a good combination. There's a lot of long lines of sight you can get. The ability to be able to see through the smokes. A lot of lobby plants come down under the cover of a smoke and not really bringing the, the Maestro there just, you know, begs a little bit of a question. Yeah, I don't really like it. I feel like the stream should be bringing the Maestro here. We saw as well in their Empire game, they just weren't bringing Maestro really at all. They didn't really bring it at all during their first map. They brought it a little bit more during their second map, but I don't know. I really don't like the fact that an Ash is banned out here and we are not seeing any of that going down. Like you say, with the Ash ban, it does seem to make quite a bit of sense to bring the uh, the, Ma uh, the Maestro, sorry. Um, and especially with the ADS as well, because as soon as you've lost those two Zafir lifelines, it's going to be very, very easy to uh, you know get those out on ADS tricks and keep your Maestro's evil eyes safe. Bit of a slower push this time coming out from Vitality. They seem very focused on taking good top floor control, which is very important. However, with no book, they're going to struggle to make any sort of damage upstairs or renovation when they do gain that top floor control, but the stream are not going to give it up so easily. We've got Vigil and Echo both playing upstairs as uh, we get to about the halfway point in the round now. It's going to be time for the push to start coming through from Vitality and they need to decide where that is. Without really doing all too much apart from just being upstairs, Vigil's able to waste a heck of a lot of time and Rise is coming up now as well to assist that, planting down some ADSs that are just going to uh, enable Yellow Stairs to be, uh, or maybe he's even taking them up because the push isn't coming from Yellow, he's going to redeploy them elsewhere. I think he took it off as well because the Thatcher is just about to come down and wow, sneaky on the cross and he finds another one through the connector window. No one is contesting this right now from the stream and they just start to drop like flies. Uno is going to peek it on the console window. He does pick up Spark, but that's the Thatcher gun down. That's not a massive amount of utility, but it is a pick nonetheless. But this is a 4v3, but not only that, your Echo is dead. Echo is certainly not the operator that you want to be losing at any point in the round. Drone work going to come through now as Uno looks like he's ever so tempted to peek out onto the Capital on the Repel, but he's going to save that and save his life. We've got Aces now rotating back down located. onto site as the plant is certainly going to look to start going down at some point now from Vitality. Aces looks like he just saw a drone there and I think his game sense is telling him that someone's going to be pushing it up from either the window or the bottom of Spiral. So we're just going to hold that for a couple of seconds. It looks as though Bibu isn't really giving anything up at this point. All going to be about who holds that angle for longer. Smoke grenades 
are going to come out as it does force Aces to make that push in as the attackers are pushing up. Uno does get the kill onto Brid. Aces getting another one onto RX. BB though does manage to pick up the kill onto Aces. Hicks making this a two versus one now. BB's got it all to do. The default cam is still up so the defenders have got good information. He picks up the bomb. Three seconds left. Not enough time. Hicks gets the shotgun to close out the round. Lestream with a really good defense there. Instantly were play coming out from the stream especially, but you mentioned it right at the end there where you figure there's a push coming from there because there's a drone seeing that, right? And Aces sees the drone coming out. He knows that top floor is clear. So he knows, yeah, someone probably gonna push up spiral and that's great game sense. And the game sense is telling him, is that like Spidey Sense? It is Spidey Sense. Game sense is uh you can't describe it. You can't learn it. It's just something that you either you, you just got to get it. You got to get bitten get by bit. Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, and uh, and that gives you your siege senses. Is that the title of next the uh, next song coming out from Panari's new album, <laughs> Game Sense from Aces? But we'll see how it goes down. As we'll see, round number ten getting underway. The stream looking very very good indeed. We'll see exactly how that just go through. Still no maestro, but they are bringing the clash. They're obviously trying to emulate the good success that Vitality had with the Clash. Um, but Vitality didn't bring the Clash on this bomb site because they didn't defend this bomb site. This is probably the, the the least likely bomb site I would I would see bringing a Clash on just because of how many cross crossfires are able to be established by the attackers on here. And you know if you if you put it out to a vote, you know a Clash versus a Maestro on this, I think everyone's going to be picking Maestro. Yeah, but I'm really excited to see what Alpha is going to be able to do with it. I'm sure they've got a bit of a plan as to how they're going to deploy this utility because we haven't seen a whole lot of Clash play so far. But we seem to have come to Consular and it's been almost a constant pick. It definitely has been. Uh, I think Vitality have been playing a little bit better than the stream has around the Clash. I mean, we haven't really seen any Clash from the stream yet, but just looking at the way they've set up, Vitality had a lot of these like clash size rotate holes going around and you do make a good point It doesn't make a huge amount of sense to bring a clash here on the top floor When there are so many crossfires you can set up and the Vitality have been playing the windows so well so far I, I really just don't like the clash here and also the amount of utility that Stacker Vitality have bomb. to deal with the clash The Sophia and the Capitao here as well as the Thatcher in a way. I just don't like it it's also a very big round as well for um, the team of the stream because they're not going to want to drop this round. If they win this round, they're going to go to match point. That's going to make their road just a little bit easier. So far, this map has been very neck and neck. Last time they defended up in console, they won the round. I'm not sure why they're trying to do all too much different this time um, because it was a fairly convincing win as well. They managed to pick up two very early picks, making it a five versus three, pretty much straight off the rip. So yeah, the, the clash does just seem a little bit strange as, uh, as you can see. Clash there, Alpha just uh, maybe redeployed himself over toward the admin side if that's where he feels like the push is going to be coming from. But no real control being gained yet by Vitality. We've got a foothold inside of admin with Zephyr, but no one's really peeking onto the Zephyr there. So she's not really she's not really gaining anything, but she's also not really doing any harm at this point because it seems as though the members of the stream are going to be very well placed deeper into the west side to uh, you know back that push up from when it comes. We also got Uno's Echo Drones just placed strategically, one on each site here. I see Sneaky has made his way up here, but I don't like the fact that no one is pushing with him. If you have admin control, it could be a really good beach here to push it through. There should be Habana just rotating that way as well, and they can open a projector like that. And they can just push in through there, but Vitality are all over the place right now. They are going to start moving in a little bit more, and see Spark, and we'll see the Capitao moving through onto the balcony. Hopefully, it should go fairly well for them in terms of execute. But they've still got so much to deal with. There's still 10 members up. And this is kind of like a classic Vitality push as well. Yeah, a little bit slow, a little bit considered. They're just sort of waiting for something, you know, they're waiting for a chink in the stream's armor to come up. Um, and I don't think that it's going to really come because they're just sort of playing out on the balcony. The smoke grenades are going to come out from the stream, which is really going to make things very difficult now. A lot of deniability over on the A site. Brid does open things up with a kill onto Aces. Legion no longer a factor, but Alpha is still able to defend in the site. RxW taking the initiative, jumping in and getting the knife onto the... Sorry, it was Brid that got the knife onto it, but Rx getting the kill. Hicks picking up one as well. Four versus three. Tide has turned. Vitality is all of a sudden looking very good for you guys. The Yokai drone is going to come out. RxWD is going to pick up another kill onto Hicks. Two versus four. The diffuser is in the hands of Brid. The plant will not go down. It's been denied. The stream 
picking up another round on defense. Really well played by them, just to play off the fact that Vitality didn't bring an IQ there, and Uno, he knows, he doesn't have to peek. He knows what Vitality gonna do, he knows they're gonna push to the very last second. You see that all the push and utility went down from them in the last 30 seconds of the round. That is a classic Vitality push. They did it pretty much all the way through into Pro League. It didn't work for them there, and it's not gonna work for them here. Do you think the clash en enabled that a little bit to a degree, and it was a, a really key factor of keeping hold of uh, theater room control? Or... I don't, I don't think so, honestly, because you see that Vitality were taking control, and you were kind of making the point that yes, they were waiting for a chink in the armor, but I think they were just taking control and just kind of waiting for ages. They were waiting until the timer had run down Defenders to the point where they had to push. Then they were putting down their utility. And you saw that they didn't really even deploy any utility to deal with the class. They kind of ran in there and just smacked him about a bit. But, yeah. You can't always wait that late when there's an echo still there as well. Because yeah, it's the echo that puts that round There's out an out. echo on the board and you don't have an IQ. You really just need to push in and get quickly in there so you know where they're down. But you can just put down EMPs as well to know where those echo drones are. I think Vitality played it well. And if there wasn't an echo on the board, that last echo push would actually worked out quite well for them. I think Alphama didn't play that clash very well at all. He's way too aggressive with that. It's difficult because, you know, they won the round, they wasted a lot of time. Would they have won it if they'd have had a different operator? Potentially. It's not, it's going to be a mute point at this point because I think the stream probably don't really care about the previous round because now they're on match point. Six to four. They're looking very good to take this. Last time we saw Garage um, was over on when the, before the tide has turned and uh, the defenders actually won that as well. The stream did win it on attack. So, so far we've seen it go both ways, one apiece. Not really much precedent to go off here, but Vitality haven't attacked here yet, and I think that's going to be the the, the key factor as uh, as to you know what they're going to bring to this. They've got the double hard breach, which is going to make things a little bit easier, as well as having the Thatcher here. There, the exothermic charge has already gone off, so garage wall will be open within the first 35 seconds, which is pretty big. Bibu a little bit aware that someone could be playing in piano. Two kills going to come out. Bibu's going to find Rise in deep in. Oh, and the plant is coming down as well. Aces is going to deny that plant. He goes for the run out, but he gets punished for it. I'm not sure what's going on here, but it's going to be two versus three, uh, essentially, because we've got a player downed on the defending side. The Yokai drone is still up. The plant is now going to be going down for a second time. The Yokai drone is able to deny that plant, but the drone is lost in the process. Clash now left upstairs. Clash surely is one of the only gunners left. Has got to push away down yellow and try to attempt to retake this side, but no, the defuse is going to go down. The stream are going to find themselves very, very difficult position here, trying to take this sneak. He's going to peek out and get the kill. Bibu, another one. Bibu making it a second. Great round from Vitality. They took a lot of initiative there. I think how quickly they got the garage door open really helped them out. Yeah, really helped them out as well. But Vitality there reckoned, I think that we took that way too slow in the last round. Let's just push. Let's just push immediately. And yeah, it worked out way better for them. I mean, if you don't have the IQ, you just need to push immediately and you need to force those Echo Drones out of hiding. And that just worked out perfectly for Vitality. I honestly don't think that anything went wrong for them there. They played that perfectly. Their execute was amazing. And Lestream were just completely caught off guard by it. Yeah, they, they, they weren't ready for it at all. Like you say, the Echo Drones just got baited out. The Clash just was removed from the equation because of how quickly they pushed. And at the point where Clash has got a pistol out trying to pick up some kills, you know that things haven't really gone to plan. Um, you can see here that there's going to be no... Oh, sorry, one late six-pick spark. Just going to switch over from one SAS operator to the other. Thatcher over to Sledge there. Um, the IQ is going to be here. I don't. I really don't know why they're bringing the Clash yet again. It, it just really didn't work for them last time. The way that Vitality were able to get the garage door open so quickly, it just removed it from being a factor. The stream still on match point, still only one round away, but overtime is looming. Yeah, just one round away from Vitality to bring this into overtime, of course. We'll see how it goes down. I think that also the stream need to get off this clash because it is not working out for them. They're not doing anything with it. Unlike Vitality, who initially they played the clash fairly badly and he was playing way too aggressively. They ended up playing the map quite heavily around the Clash and it actually worked out quite well for them, but I just, I can't help but think that the stream, they just went against the Clash. It was so hard for them to push through and now they think they can just take it and it'll just work. They should 
I think that the stream are going to be able to hold on to the garage door for a little bit longer this time. They've not got the Thatcher. They six picked out onto the sledge, which is going to mean they need to take upstairs control and they need to try and You're open ready. up, uh, remove the bandit from being able to bandit trick or just shoot off any pre-placed bandits. They've got double hard breach, so they do make the job a little bit easier for themselves there on vitality. Um, that's going to enable them. If the bandit is going to try and trick, it's going to be a little bit easier to open that door. But the Clash needs to be playing upstairs if that's the case because the Clash is going to want to try and buy the defenders left on the site as much time as possible. Clash is useful later on, but I think a lot of the value comes in trying to slow down the attacking, the, you know, the initial t attack push. It doesn't really come, you know, there's not too much value in a Clash really later on into the round as it's progressed and as the kills have started to come through because usually at that point you're going to need a gun. Yeah, you do need a gun. And I think that, you know, Joystick again mentioned this in his in his interview that he thinks that Lustream have really good gun skill, but they don't have great strats. And I just think if you're going to play off your gun skill and you're going to play aggressively at that, that your clash needs to not be part of your lineup. I think this is really affecting their ability to really push against Vitality. But again, Vitality moving a little bit too slow here. They've not taken too much control and they are starting to slowly take control of the top floor. But this is way too late. They should be moving way quicker than this right now. Yeah, especially considered how quickly they moved last time and how well it worked for them. I'm pretty surprised to see such a slow push coming out this time. Ace is just making sure that no one's going to be playing over in admin. Not playing too aggressively. Maybe even going to try and rotate his way back onto site at this point. Minute and 15 left on the clock. His value is going to be downstairs in the site. Or maybe trying to pick up a kill on the way. Um, but ultimately, the push has got to start coming out pretty soon from Vitality. Sophia is still upstairs, just holding an angle. She's got a Claymore on that, so I'm not too sure why she's still holding it but they're going to lose the IQ which is going to be a very big pick there from Uno with the bandit and he's just heard a goo mine as well go off on spiral stairs this is a little bit better because Hicks has been allowed to get himself into the late game and now Uno is going to be able to play off him Ace going to pick up a kill onto Bibu so Hibana no longer a factor as well and he's going to make that another one picking up the kill onto Spark 5 versus 2 this looks very very good for the stream Sneaky going to trade it straight back out however bringing it down to a 4 versus 2 still Looking pretty good for the stream at this point. Clash now able to do clash things and deny access through the garage wall. Sneaky just peeking out. Oh, I'm going to find the head of Uno as Uno aggressively peeks up. No real need for that aggression, but it is late on. Only 15 or so seconds remaining. Sneaky's going to drop the hatch, make his way through to pipes, pushing down on the corridor. There's going to still be Yokai drones out, which are going to help to deny any plant that may come through. Sneaky does find the kill onto Alpha, but Rise trades that straight back out. Clash is doing absolutely everything to deny this plant and it is going to work the stream are going to take the first map members of the stream can you please stop peeking the man who's on Sophia and he's on a mission there were three people died because they're completely out of position but in the end it worked out for them but my golly that man almost clutched that completely Sneaky did a great job there of nearly just, like you say, clutching out the whole round uh, you can see there he finished on 12 and 9 aces and hicks Hicks, despite his little clash appearance, still managed to get 10 kills.